Welcome, and thanks for joining with AIP, the American Institute of Pyramid Research. We study pyramids around the world, especially in Egypt, with the belief they hold special wisdom. Please subscribe to our channel as we uncover long hidden secrets, explain sacred symbols, and demystify the world's greatest mysteries. Thanks for joining us for part two of the Hemi New Template, a horizontal cross section of the Great Pyramid that's very interesting. Let's pick up where we left off. Hemi Unu plainly put a focus on this particular template. template. It spawns Menkar, as we showed. And then Jim Allison shows the width of the Giza Plateau from the eastern side of the, the uh, two temples, the Sphinx Temple and, and the Khafre Temple. That's the east side of the Giza Plateau. And then if we take Menkara's west side to be the west side, that's 2,000 cubits. So Hemi Unu's template is exactly one-tenth of the width of the Giza Plateau. Interesting. There's many pyramids that have sides of 200. Uh, for instance, uh, Neferkari in Abu Sir, uh, Senreset the first at Leisht, Senreset the third at Dashur. So again, this this seems to be a template that that Hemiunu is showing us here. So I'm going to officially call it the Hemiunu template from now on. Now the pyramid that was meant for the trial passages, because the trial passages. Uh, uh, Here's the Hemiunu. So let, let's first define the Hemiunu template. Okay, so we take the boat pit pointers. They point to the southwest corner. So we just make a square from that. There's the Hemiunu template. Well, that is the size of the pyramid that was meant for the trial passages. Okay, so uh, the, the Queen's Pyramids run right through the trench called the Third Trial Passage. That would be the exact center of that pyramid. And there's the line of the trial passages, which exactly mimics the line of passages in the Great Pyramid. So there is the pyramid that was meant for the trial passages. Now, uh, it's not Khufu's satellite pyramid. Uh, when Dr. Lehner wrote his paper where he talked about it, he, he called it a satellite, but then Zahi Awas later found the actual uh, satellite pyramid of Khufu down near the southeast corner. But it's still a, this is still a, an incredible pyramid right there that would have been placed over the trial passages. As a matter of fact, um, Pering, when he first discovered the trial passages, said they were a pyramid cutting. They were a cutting for a pyramid. Okay, so here's the here's the uh, the third trial passage, and that would be the center line of this 200 cubit pyramid that would cover the trial passages. So that's where the entrance would be, and if you picture that gold line as if it was going down into the earth, being cut at an angle, and then if you went back up, that's the, the well shaft there, and then from that well shaft point, start coming back up at a, at a 26 degree angle toward the surface, and then, you know, the grand gallery would be there, and so there is the, you know, the bottom of this 200 cubit pyramid. Okay, so Dr. Lehner's uh, following cues to suggest an intended superstructure is correct. I think Dr. Lehner was correct in following that line of reasoning. The designers knew they had left enough clues in a sense then so they didn't have to complete the pyramid because we've seen it. Dr. Lehner envisioned it, and I do think that the, 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 uh, the, the builders intended that. So they didn't have to build it because now it exists, exists in conception. That pyramid over the trial passages is there sort of representing a special symbolic pyramid of Khufu. So upon going through the trial passages, now out in the open, you're not in the you're not going into the Great Pyramid. You paid your money, you're going into the Great Pyramid, you're going through courses of masonry, masonry, and then once you do uh, exit at the Grand Gallery, uh, you know you, you you come through the first ascending passage, you go to the Grand Gallery, and then you go in to see the sarcophagus. And then you've got to go back out the same way, showing you you're just you know, you, but but not so with the trial passages. You walk into real life. The idea of consubstantiality. You've entered the next life. In other words, you're coming out of this, you know, there's the claustrophobic point, but you're in the grand gallery, and then you don't walk into a closed king's chamber. You you walk out on the causeway. It's symbolic of actual resurrection, which is what the king wants for his people, and it's what God wants for all of us. That's what I think the Great Pyramid is saying. So here's uh Here's the Hemiunu template, and it, it, this 200 cubits is exactly the distance between where the king's chamber shafts exit. So we can place this right there. That's where the Hemiunu template would go. It fits right on top of the Great Pyramid. 
and just the upper passages, the basically the Grand Gallery and you know the, the King's Chamber would be in that that top pyramidion. Okay, so that's an interesting alignment there. Okay, now let's compare it with uh, the Vitruvian Man. Uh, here's Alan Green's drawing of the Vitruvian Man, and we know that the Da Vinci spent time uh, in Egypt and seemed to have gained an intimate knowledge of the Great Pyramid when he was there. And so in these horizontal lines that he drew seemingly for no other reason in the Vitruvian Man line up with known passages, the subterranean passage in the Queen's Chamber, King's Chamber, and it predicts therefore these other chambers up here which will be found because again the other horizontals in Da Vinci's Vitruvian Man have passages. So if we put our Hemiunu template over that, there will be the tip of uh, one of the, this undiscovered chamber, but it's right in the middle line there, would be in there, and then if there's upper, you know, undiscovered chambers up there, they would also be in this Hemiunu template. So the Hemiunu, and, and here is another amazing thing about, about the Hemiunu template. Look at this. The head of the Vitruvian man is there. This is the head cornerstone, the head of the body. So this would, in a sense, symbolize God, the head. This is Osiris. This is Orion. This, this, is, this is where the, the, the risen you know, Pharaoh is. And then he's, of course, connected to the, the cause of, of the body of his people. But interesting connections when you place this Hemiunu template, which is revealed by his tomb and by the Great Pyramid, when you place it in the Great Pyramid, it fits right there. So interesting. Some incredible things happen when we overlay two major pyramids that are 200 cubits high over the Hemiunu template. So right here, I've just basically taken the Red Pyramid and the Bent Pyramid because they're both exactly 200 cubits high. We're showing the underground here of the Bent Pyramid. But I extended the sides on the Bent Pyramid with red lines because that's the size of the Red Pyramid. They have exactly the same slope angle up here, the mild angle of 43 degrees, but the Red Pyramid continues it, continues it all the way down, and the Bent Pyramid at its uh, uh, change point here, you know, becomes a much bigger angle, like 54 degrees. Okay, so two pyramids with 200 cubits. Remember, our Hemiunu template is 200 cubits there. Okay, so let's look at some interesting things about the Bent Pyramid, okay? So uh, let's take the opacity off of this. So the top part of the Bent Pyramid is associated with a pentagon and fiveness, and the bottom part is associated with sickness, sixness and a hexagon. Now we've seen in other programs, if you followed this channel, the incredible nature of the merger of the hexagon and the pentagon. It relates to the entrance of the Great Pyramid. And it really is a symbol of the meaning of life, the connection of heaven and earth, the macrocosm and the microcosm. So some heavy stuff here is encoded in the Bent Pyramid. Now, um, and, and here's how that is. If you take uh, a, uh, a hexagon here, okay, like this, uh, you can divide a hexagon into six parts, okay? This bottom of the Bent Pyramid is, if you, you can see how it extends there, it would fit into one of these. In other words, there are, if you took six of the the the, uh, the side panel of the Bent Pyramid, it would make a hexagon. So that's why this is sixness. And then the same thing with uh, the pentagon, okay? Uh, okay, if you took this top part, the red part, as take just that one section, if you took five of those, it would make a pentagon. Now that's incredible that this has to be the exact size to do that, and this has to be the exact size to do that. So the Bent Pyramid does that. Now the thing you need to know is Egyptologists say the Bent Pyramid was a mistake. Okay, so uh, let's bring this article to the front here. Okay, this is an article, uh, actually Keith Hamilton's written three about the Bent Pyramid. This is called The Curious Case of the 60 Degree Pyramid. I'll put a link in the description. And he says here, he watched the PBS program with uh, structural engineer, one of the finest, Steve Burroughs. And Burroughs' conclusion about the Bent Pyramid, it was built exactly the way it was supposed to. It's a great success. It's got structural integrity. 
Now, the standard Egyptological line is, no, the reason that the bend pyramid is bent is because when they got up to this height, oh, it started to crinkle or crumble over here. It started to crack, so we can't go as high as we intended. We're going to have to make it shorter. Now, there's hardly any evidence for that. Read Keith's articles. He's, he looks at all the Egyptologists who have studied, you know, and for, for the uh, bend pyramid to be the most, the best intact pyramid we have, it's the least studied you can't keep making that claim, Egyptologist, that it was a mistake. There's not evidence for a mistake. Let's look at some other things if it was a mistake. All right, so let's uh, get this out of there. All right, so the accidental height, oh, accidentally it ended up being 200 because they changed this. So, but it was supposed to be, if, if you take this the way it was supposed to continue up there, you know, uh, it was supposed to be 220.617. Oh, instead they made a mistake and it became exactly 200 cubits. And Okay, and how did they know the amount of structural damage that was coming that it would still handle this much weight? Look at all that weight that's still on it. Okay, so they didn't go all the way up there. They still put a tremendous amount of weight. How did they know it wouldn't hold this much, but it would hold this much? Please. go. All right, so... You can still show fiveness and sickness, sixness, those two concepts, and you can break it anywhere. You could have had the, the small part up here. You could have it down here. This will still always represent, this hexagon will still always represent six, and this pentagon top will always represent that. So why did they split it exactly where they did? Well, if you look at the best measurements, uh, Petri, and then there's a more recent uh, study that, that was bent. There was a, of the 200 cubits, there's 110.1 at the top, and 89.9 at the bottom. Now, why didn't they just do, you know, 90 and a and, and 100, you know, and 10? Why did they do 110.1 and 89.9? Because when you divide these, the showing because in geometry you're always dealing with proportions. This is root three over root two. That's what they're showing in this top. The square root of three over the square root of two, which as I'm going to, I'll put this in front here. Oh my goodness, the square root of three over the square root of two, the same 200 cubit, this is the same size here now. So let's say this, this uh, you know, this cube, cube is, is uh, 200 cubits. Okay, the diagonal in that is, and if you put a sphere inside of it, the diagonal of, of, of that cube, which is the spheres in there, is root three. And the two-dimensional of the square is root two. So what the bent pyramid is doing is taking us from two-dimensional to three-dimensional geometry in this Hemiunu template. Because this is that same size. It's just turned into a cube. Oh my goodness, because of the exact split, the exact place that they chose to split. Let's send this to the front here. The exact place they chose to split it tells us they're thinking about this. So I could go on, but I'm simply going to say the Hemiunu template is incredible. The Bent Pyramid is incredible. And there's more to come. Stay with us. Please stay with us.